Miller Japala, to introduce our first witness, who is a constituent of Representative Jayapal's. And thank you for helping us get this witness. Thank you so much, Chairwoman Maloney, and for your uh, tremendous leadership on so many issues. I'm delighted to be here to introduce a pride of Seattle and indeed our country, Megan Rapino. Ms. Rapino is helping to redefine the role of leadership in professional sports. She is a soccer superstar and a fierce activist. We all remember that remarkable moment when the crowd began chanting equal pay instead of USA after Ms. Rapino and her teammates on the US women's national team won their second consecutive World Cup championship in 2019. Ms. Rapino is one of the most accomplished soccer players in the world. She is an Olympic gold medalist and she's won two World Cup championships. She uses every opportunity to advocate for causes she cares deeply about from social and racial justice and LGBTQ rights to equal pay. Ms. Rapino is dedicated to fighting for the rights of all athletes to work in a country and a world where economic, racial, and gender justice yields equal pay, dignity, and respect. Megan, we are so very proud, not only of your remarkable talents and achievements, but for your willingness to use your platform to fight for equality for all of us. Thank you for all you do, and I look forward to hearing your testimony today. Uh, thank you. After Ms. Rapino, we will hear from Ajin Pu, who is the Executive Director of the National Domestic Workers Alliance. Next, we will hear from Kara Habula Kar Karolas, who is the Executive Director of the Hawaii State Commission on the Status of Women. She is also testifying from Hawaii, where it is a little after 3.30 a.m. in the morning, so we thank her for her sacrifice. Uh, next, we will hear from Patrice Awunka, who is the Director of the Center for Economic Opportunity. Last but not least, we will hear from Dr. C. Nicole Mason, who is the President and CEO of the Institute for Women's Policy Research. I would like to note that Ms. Rapino has a conflict this morning and therefore has to a stop, a very hard stop at 1045, but we will try to get through as many questions as we can with Ms. Rapino before she has to go. The witnesses will be unmuted so we can swear them in. Now, please, please raise your right hands. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Yes. yes. Let the record show that the witnesses answered in the affirmative. Thank you. Without objection, your written statements will be made part of the record. With that, Ms. Rapino, you are now recognized for your testimony. Thank you, Chairwoman Maloney, and thank you, uh, Representative Jayapal uh, from the great state of Washington for such a warm welcome. Um, and thank you, everyone, for having me here today. It is an honor to be here in front of you. Um, it's probably no surprise, but equal pay and equality in general is a deep and personal passion of mine. And what we've learned and what we continue to learn is that there's no level of status and there's no accomplishment or power that will protect you from the clutches of inequality. One cannot simply outperform inequality or be excellent enough to escape discrimination of any kind. And I'm here today because I know firsthand that this is true. We're so often told in this country that if you just work hard and continue to achieve, you will be rewarded and rewarded fairly. It's the promise of the American dream, but that promise has not been for everyone. The United States Women's National Team has won four World Cup championships. We've won four Olympic gold medals on behalf of this great country. We've filled stadiums, we've broken viewing records, we've sold out our jerseys, all the popular metrics by which we are judged. And yet, despite all of this, we're still paid less than our male counterparts. For each trophy, of which there are many, for each win, for each tie, for each time we play, less. In fact, instead of lobbying with the women's team in our efforts for equal pay and equality in general, U.S. Soccer Federation has continually lobbied against our efforts and the efforts of millions of people marginalized by gender in the United States. And if it can happen to us and it can happen to me, 
with the brightest light shining on us at all times, it can and it does happen to every person who is marginalized by gender. But we don't have to wait. We don't have to continue to be patient for decades on end. We can change that today. We can change that right now. We just have to want to. So 